hello and welcome to my channel please like share and subscribe if you like this video and thank you all so much for watching thank you thank you thank you to my day ones twos and threes thank you to all my new subscribers that's coming in that means well thank you so very much appreciate you all and welcome 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 this video is for entertainment and educational purposes only so everything is alleged some it's not and the fair act use is in my description box y'all so let's get to it y'all let's get to it let's get to it um a lot of people is talking about this right now y'all um number seven one of mo three's artists y'all that act like he was beefing with bimbo beetle okay y'all uh all of a sudden now they're friends they're buddies y'all they're buddies and this is the same thing that people have been talking about for the longest have been talking about okay um all of them were friends in the first place this is how they line mo3 up and Mo3, he slipped up, y'all. He slipped up bad. He really did. Because everybody around him that he was trying to help and all of that stuff, they were all in cahoot. And now you see this is going on right now. I'm going to tell y'all something. You know, I didn't, you know, I don't understand this. Okay? I'm old school, but I still do not understand this. You know, if you are down with somebody and you rock with somebody... And they, you know, you're beefing, y'all are beefing with somebody else or somebody else is beefing with somebody you claim you rock with. And then all of a sudden, you know, they are gone. And then now that person that you, you, your boy was beefing with, you are friends with. That's suspect to me, y'all. A lot of people were saying to me, you know, uh, and I try to get number seven the benefit of the doubt. I really did. I tried to get him the benefit of the doubt. Okay. Um, but I can't anymore. I really can't because I'm going to tell you this. If it wasn't for Mo3, number seven would not be where he's at right now. If it wasn't for him, he wouldn't be there y'all. Okay. And for him to now be, you know, trying to be buddy, buddy with, with beat on them. And you know, word on the street is beat on It's another person that could have been on an expressway chasing Mo3 down or out there filming or whatever with the crew, okay? This was another person that was supposed to have been on that expressway with Mo3 when he was taken out. And this is another person, number seven, who was on the phone with Mo3 right before he passed. Now, he said this out of his own mouth that he talked to Mo3 right before he passed. And not only did he talk to Mo3 right before he passed, as if he already knew it was going to go down, Rainwater was on the phone with him while it went down. Okay, y'all? Um, it just amazes me how everybody's buddy buddy now. Okay? And I told y'all this that I talk and, and, and this is you know my personal opinion that um well not just my personal opinion, it's stuff that I didn't I, stuff that I didn't see and saw and all the stuff um with uh yellow not yellow beasy. Oh my goodness. Um, Rainwater and um Traboy, they still friends, y'all. But in the public, you know, you when they on social media and stuff like that, people on the outside of Dallas, they don't want them to know that they're still buddies. But they try to act like on social media that they that they they can't stand each other. And it, it just makes me wonder too. Mo3 wanted more than anybody to squash this beef with them. But they kept pushing, and they kept pushing. And the type of person that he was, when you push, he going to push back. That's why when Arrow did whatever he did to Mo3, he was chasing him in that car. He knew the city was behind Arrow Spence, but at the same time, he chased him because he wasn't a punk. He wasn't scared to, you know, um, push back when somebody pushed on him. Okay, y'all? But this whole little stuff that's going on right now, remember I told y'all back, I told y'all like back in 2020 or 2021, I told y'all that all of these guys are friends. I told you that Rainwater was playing both sides all along. And now you see number seven was playing both sides. People were saying he was, I tried to give him a benefit of the doubt, but this proves to me that he was playing both sides too. He wasn't, no, he wasn't for Mo3. Because you don't wake up overnight and be like, you know what? I'm about to squash this beef with, you know, Mo3 Ops. Because I just want to squash this beef. If somebody did your partner dirty, 
and line him up. Take to him on an expressway, somebody that signed you and, you know, um, signed you to his record label. Took you in and just just had so much, you know, love for you that, that he looked out for number seven. For you to now want to hang out with these guys. not And, and I'm going to tell y'all this. Even if number seven was not even close to Mo3, I'm going to just put it like this. If I was in his spot and, you know, Beto and all of these people got together to take out one person, I still wouldn't want to be tied to them in no kind of way. Because if you snake somebody like that, you they'll snake you too. You know, a lot of people say, oh, it's time for Dallas to, you know, squash the beefs and this and that and that and this. But the stuff that went down with Mo3, th that's unsquashable. Okay, y'all? And I don't care if that's a new word I just came up with. That's unsquashable. Okay, y'all? In my book, it just don't make no sense. Now, people can still, you know, stay their distance and, and do their own thing. But when you all of a sudden now is in cahoots with this person and y'all are to making plans to do stuff together and all of this stuff like this, this just makes you look bad. And it makes you look like you all, you was always a traitor of Mo3. You and Rain and all of this whole circle of people in Dallas, y'all all were traitors. All of y'all hated somebody that had talent. And, and to me now, I'm going to just say this, Dun Dun and number seven, I think that that was just, you know, it's a certain type of people that hang around people with talent so they could try to steal their, you know, their style, their flow, you know, maybe some stuff a rub off on them before they take them out. This, this is what I'm looking at right now. And I said this about Dun Dun, you know, it ain't no way in the world that, you know, you going to sign Dun Dun and his sister is best friends with somebody that you hit up in a sprinter. There's no way that that was going to work out. It's just no way. You know, if, if he, anything that Don Don knew, you know, his sister was going to find out. If the sister found out, then her best friend was going to find out. And then she was going to run it back to trial. And, you know, you, you can't just blame everybody else. You got to blame O3 too. Okay? And I have to. Okay? I, for the simple fact that Mo3 knew all of this. Mo3 knew all of this. He knew he could feel it. He sung about it. He sung about the bag going up again. Price, you know, bag on my head. Price went up again. He knew they was raised in a bag to take him out. But yet and still, he still wanted to be around certain people that was tied to these same people. You know, you got to use your brain when you got enemies out here. And when you got enemies out here, you have to put yourself first. Not nobody else. I don't care how many times the ski sister was calling him and he wanted to go over there and, 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 and all ski, 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 ski. It was too many females out here in this world for you to go and see than to keep dealing with somebody that's, you know, a baby mama to Yellow Beezy's cousin. You know, it, it's a lot of stuff that, you know, Mo3 should have. He should have, you know, made better decisions. And I say this all the time. When you have kids, your only job in this world, if you love your kids, is to make it back home to them. Whatever way you have to do it. Even if you're out here and you get into it with somebody. And if you know you're outnumbered and whatever, if you got to back down for that, you back down for your children. So you can make it back home to them. Because your kids need you right now. They actually need both parents. Okay, y'all? Because, you know, ain't nobody going to love your child like their own parents. Especially if you are good parents. Okay, y'all? And if if your whole, you know, everything in you is not about making it back home to your kids, then you're not a good parent. This is why I say you have to make the best decisions for yourself and for your children. You have to. Okay? And you have to teach your children some sense. And you can't teach them no sense when you're running around here making songs, talking about the bag went up again, and then you're still running around in the same circle. You're still hanging out with the same people that um play on both sides. They say Mo3 made a song about his own manager, that he was playing both sides. But yet and still, he, look who he was on the phone with when he passed, y'all. Look who he was still, you know, mingling and dealing and dealing with while all this stuff was going on. You know, it, it it seems as if, and I'll just put it like this. 
money clouts people's brains, y'all. To me, money kind of clouts pe some people, not everybody, because some people in this world that that never had anything, you could put a, a, all kind of money in their face and 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 give it to them, and they're gonna be that same person. But some people get a few dollars in their pocket and their head go up and they start acting like, "Oh, you beneath me," you know. I'm I, I'm special, you know, and this is how some people start acting. And then some people start acting like they're bulletproof and that they, you know, they know everything and they got everything in control and you can't tell them anything. And I, I just feel like Mo3 was this type of person, even though he was, you know, um, humble to the fact that he was still giving to the homeless and all kind of stuff. He would see homeless people out and reach in his pocket and give it to him. He still showed so much love for people at the same time. And he was going through a lot because he had so many people coming at him. But at the same time, he would not listen. He wouldn't listen. Okay? And, you know, some of the stuff that came out about his mama trying to warn him and try to talk to him about certain things, he wouldn't listen, y'all. He would not listen. He was doing his own thing, and he didn't care. If he wanted to go over there and hit the ski sister, no matter how much danger he was in going on the other side of town where her people was at and where he was easily to get, get at, he still wouldn't. So, you know, you have to, as a person, y'all, you know, Ladies and gentlemen out here, you have to as a person when you are going and, and this is for anybody because, I, you know, we hear a lot of this all the time on the news about certain street associates people. I had a friend, too, that when he I had a best friend, you know, I grew up with in grammar school and everything. And he was the class clown, y'all. He was so goofy and silly. He just had everybody laughing all day long. He wasn't mean-hearted to people. He was just had a really good heart, and he was sweet. Okay, y'all? He was so sweet. He was so nice. Good-looking, too, y'all. He was fine. Okay? But he went to jail. I don't know what he went to jail for, but, you know, we heard through the neighborhood. He went, through, went to jail. He went to prison. He stayed gone for a nice little time. And when he came back, oh, Lord, he was even fatter than he was before he left. Okay, y'all? But then when he got out, y'all, he got out of jail. And we thinking that, you know, he's silly. He going to just, you know, get a job, do his own thing. You know, it, nobody wasn't thinking that something was going to happen to him. But, you know, he wasn't no street associate. He wasn't hanging out with, you know, street associates and stuff like that. He wasn't that type of person. He was like, like you know, nerdy, but not nerdy. Okay, y'all, just stayed out of trouble, stuff like that. I don't know what he went to prison for, but like I said, you know, he got out, and you know, we're we we're not we we all expect that we're gonna have some time to spend with him. Okay, he just got out. We ain't seen him in a long time. Everybody in the neighborhood expecting like we're gonna we're gonna see kick it with you later when we run into him on the street. You know, we're gonna get, we're gonna get together, hook up, blah 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 blah, and. You know, he's living, going on about his life, everybody going on about theirs. And then he goes and meets this female. Okay, I guess he runs into this female, and then she tells him to come visit her. So he goes to her neighborhood. And he know nothing about that neighborhood. He know nothing, y'all. Okay? But, uh, man, you this female that he went to go visit... You know, she's somebody that's plugged in a neighborhood and, you know, um, you know, got a nice shape, really pretty... And even though she wasn't no person that was into no street association stuff, she still hung around a lot of guys that was in street associations, okay? So as far as that, the neighborhood guys figured that she belonged to them, okay? If anybody was going to hit that, it was just people in the neighborhood. Ain't nobody outside is about to come over here and get none of this. This is ours. This is how the guys felt. So he goes over to this neighborhood and gets taken out, y'all going to see her he didn't get into it with none of these guys or nothing they just took his life because he was in their neighborhood and going to see somebody that some of them was messing with okay you have to be careful what you're doing when you're meeting people on these lines and stuff you have to be careful what you're doing don't lie to people and tell people oh i'm going this way and i'm going that way because if something happens to you your family is telling the police a whole different story because you told them you was going somewhere else. Because you didn't want them to know you was going over there. Because somebody's going to probably try to talk you out of going over there. Because it's bad over there. So y'all start listening. Please start listening. A, a beautiful young man was taken out. 
because he met some female going to see her as if he didn't have enough in his own neighborhood, okay? And even if he didn't, you know, everybody don't want to mess with somebody in their neighborhood. That's true. But at the same time, find out about the neighborhood that you're going to visit somebody in, okay? Don't just meet somebody on the phone or whatever or online and then you just pop up and go in their neighborhood, okay, just to go visit them, okay? If they give you their address, make some rounds. Come around there a couple times in the morning, in the middle, in the night, and see if, you know, niggas hanging out and all of that. S look at the walls, okay? Look at the walls and see if there's any kind of graffiti on there because that'll tell you what type of street association neighborhood that you're going in, okay? And even if it's not on the walls, you can go to Google and you can pull up certain neighborhoods and pull up what street associations is in that neighborhood and they'll, it'll come up too, Okay? Check things like this out before you go visiting somebody that you know nothing about their neighborhood, okay? So I say this, you know, I've said this to my son. I've said this to his friends. People, in general, I tell people this all the time. You got to be careful what you're doing. Always tell somebody where you're going. Don't just be secretive about something. Even if you, you know, don't want somebody to know, tell somebody that you trust where you're going and what you're doing. All the time. Don't just, just do stuff to be doing it. And don't nobody know nothing. And then something happened. And they don't have a clue who did it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And they don't have a clue who did it. And then these people end up getting away with taking your life. So you have to be careful. And Mo3 wasn't being careful, y'all. He was not. He was being hard-headed. And even though I love me some Mo3, I'm still going to tell you the truth. Mo3 was being hard-headed, and he wasn't even listening to his own self. Instead of him just walking away from this whole mess and walking away from Dallas, period. Okay, y'all? There was nothing wrong with Mo3 moving out the city, taking his family out the city, and, you know, every now and then come back and visit. But heavily security around you when you come to visit, if that's what he wanted to do. Even if he wanted to help people for, to, in Dallas. I help people all the time. I do. I help people. But I don't go around their neighborhood to help them. I barely even talk to people that I help. If I want to help somebody, I help them and I go on by my business. You don't got to call me and say, um, thank you and none of that. I send something and, and go right on about my business. MO3 could have done the same. But he was doing something totally different, y'all. Every time he get into it with somebody, he write about it. Every time he do something else and somebody do something or raise the bag on his head, then he was finding out about it. People was coming back. Somebody had to be coming back telling them something that they raised the bag on your head again. It ain't 50000 no more. It's 100000 now, man. And you know what he would do? Go write about it. But anybody with some sense that didn't want to get taken out and they wanted to be there for their kids and their mama and whoever else, they would have did different things. And Mo3 didn't do that, y'all. And he had the money to do it. If he was living in the same building with Eric Spence, he was making some good money, y'all. He bought his mama a house. He was making some good money, y'all. If you're getting getting into it with everybody in the city almost, okay? And you the people that you're getting into it with is plugged with the commission, the police and all of that stuff. You know what I would have did? I would have they I would have saw them in my rear view, like Tupac said. I would have been looking at them from a rear view mirror. I would have been out of there. And I would have took my family too. He still even bought his mom's house in it, you know, still down in, in Dallas. Why? He wasn't even really seeming like he was in a hurry to get away from all of that drama. The more money that you make. The more talented that you are, you are going to have enemies. And they are going to pile up and pile up and pile up. And everyday people know this. You could be an everyday person. You can go to school with somebody. You can um, get a job and they can get a job at McDonald's and you get a job somewhere else and you're making more money than them. And if that person in your classroom was a hater then, they a hater when they grow up. And you have to be careful who you're hanging around. He was putting snakes in his own den, y'all. Dun Dun and number seven should have never been signed to Mo3 whatsoever. They should have never been around Mo3.
for the simple fact of their background and how they, you know, fence riders is what I call it. Play both sides, okay? They shouldn't have never been around in the first place. Mo3 let these people be around him. And now he's gone and they're all friends again with his enemies. If they was ever enemies in the first place. Because I, to be honest with y'all, we only see certain things. We only see certain posts they put up and this and that and that and this. But like I told y'all about, you know, Rainwater and Trapping them is buddies. Buddies, it really, they're close. And they've been that way. They were all playing Mo3. Even that little fake fights that he was getting into it with Kenny Baby Boy at the airport. The other fake fight he was getting into it with the other guy that just got shot up and stuff and almost passed away. All of this stuff allegedly was fake. So if all of that was fake, y'all think all of this right here wasn't fake too? Now I want y'all to remember when I told y'all about Rainwater went out to went out, out of town. And he went out of town the same time Beto and then went out of town too. Remember that when I showed y'all that? This one right here to the left. He was in California at the same time that um, Mo3's manager was in California. They was all going on vacation together right after Mo3 passed. And what are the odds of Kenny Baby Boy being on that expressway when they was taking Mo3 out and then him and Rainwater in Las Vegas at the same time? Rainwater been, my personal opinion, been friends with these guys ever since and way before Mo3 passed. They all been buddies. They used Mo3 for what they needed to use him for. And, and Rainwater is still getting paid off of that man. And that's sad that allegedly his manager played a big, big, big part in helping set him up and line him up on that expressway. And now he's enjoying Mo3's hard labor, all his songs that he wrote, and this and that and, that and this. He's still getting paid off of Mo3. And allegedly, he's going with his his girlfriends, his ex-girlfriends, and all these women that Mo3, some of the women he was messing with, his manager is messing with him too. It's just so much, y'all, going on, okay? That don't make no sense after Mo3 passed. And it, it's sad to me. It really is. But y'all let me know what y'all think about this whole situation about, you know, number seven and Beto all of a sudden now they, they buddy buddies. Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comment section because there's a lot of people... That's, you know, a lot of, and I and I thank you all so much, but a lot of people from Dallas that follow me, you know, that is, you know, my subscribers. So please let me know how y'all feel about this. Do y'all feel that they were already friends and they just letting the cat out the bag because they had a hat and that they friends? Do y'all feel that way? Or do y'all think it's a good thing that they should go on and make up and, you know, um, try to mend the fence? Because even if they did make up, I still don't see me being around these guys. If y'all were lining somebody up like that, that's the dirtiest thing that they could do. You don't think that'll do it to you whenever they feel like it? What if they start hanging out with you and they want to turn on you and line you up the same way? So y'all let me know what y'all think. Because, you know, some people feel like I can hold on to a grudge forever and I just, you know, I just, I'm just not the type of person that can, you get know, turn the other cheek. That's not me. You know, once I'm sick and tired of the bull crap, I'm sick and tired of it. And I just want out of any stupidity. You know, when I got to keep arguing and cussing and fussing with you, that means we don't, we are not on the same page. So you go do you and I do me and we don't have to be enemies. We just don't get along. So you just go your way and I go mad. That's how I feel. I just can't keep doing the same thing over for years and years and years. It's like if you got a particular cousin that you don't get along with, you keep getting, every time you make up, you get into it again. Make up, get into it again. Sooner or later, you get sick of that shit, okay, y'all? You just be like, look, we don't get along, okay? And you, you done bit my hand 55 times. I don't want it a 56 time, okay? I'm done. It that's how I feel. Like, I, I, I don't like wasting my time. I don't like keep just letting somebody keep doing the same thing over and over to me. You make up with them. You buy them gifts. They buy you something. You know, y'all talk for a little while. It seemed like it's good. And you're enjoying the person. And then all of a sudden, you know, they start showing their colors again. And you be like, oh, well, I shouldn't have even done this in the first place. But you knew you shouldn't have done it. You knew you should have just left people alone. Even if you love them. If you can't, it's so many people in this world that love people but still can't get along with them. 
And when when that happens, you, you just go your way and let them go theirs. Wish them well. I say this all the time. Wish them well. Don't hope nothing bad come to them. Wish them well. Even though they might hope something bad come to you. Because a lot of people do. It doesn't matter what you do for them. They will still, you know, do things to you. No matter what. But you don't have to be the same way. And you don't have to be the type of person to keep letting somebody keep their foot on your neck either. Just because you still care about them. You can care for people from a distance. You can. And this is how I would do this situation right here. Ain't no way that I would be around beat on them again. Unless he was already around them in the first place. They never really had any problems with each other in the first place. Because a lot of people felt like, oh, the beef was over with right after Mo 3 passed. They was like, oh, the beef over now. So if the beef was over after Mo 3 passed, was there ever a beef, beef between y'all in the first place? Or did y'all all just want Mo 3 out of there? Which don't make no sense to me. Because the, the, Mo 3 would have helped build Dallas up like no other. But it's the haters, y'all. If people can't control you, they will hate on you. And they couldn't control Mo 3. But y'all let me know in the comment section what y'all think about this whole reunion. If it's a reunion. Because I personally kind of feeling now that they've been talking in the first place. They're just letting everybody else know about it. But y'all let me know what y'all feel. Anyway, please like, share, and subscribe if you like this video. And thanks for watching, y'all. Peace.